How about this? A basement workshop with an incredible river view. We're outside of Boston. We're visiting a project that Steve Basic recently completed. And this basement workshop is the homeowner's workshop that got built during construction so that he could do all kinds of projects in tandem with the builder. There's Steve. Hey, buddy. Steve, what is the story on this house? Oh, this is, I mean, you know, as an architect, you're always looking for projects where you say, man, if I only could do that one dream project and then <laughs> bang, you meet Carl <laughs> and here we are. So, so yeah. in our last video, we showed the river, the siding, all that stuff. On this video, Steve and I are gonna give you a tour of some crazy cool modern details. A lot of them actually done by the homeowner. We're also gonna show you some mechanical rooms that, Steve, I was blown away by the mechanicals the, in this the, house. Carl's probably one of the most meticulous people I've ever met. This is a, this is a house that's very rare. Uh, super high performance with some super modern and interesting details mm -hmm. as well. And really high level of craftsmanship. Yeah, Job and site. performance. And performance, that's right. Well, Job site tour of a Steve Basic job. Let's get going. All right, Matt, so before we go upstairs, I think it's really important that you understand. I mean, I'm still trying to figure Carl out, but get an understanding of Carl. You know, he built this wood shop here. He's got, you know, actuators on all of his dust collection that he opened up the machines, wired to, <laughs> so when he hits the on switch, stuff happens. The dust collector turns on and the blast gate opens. And the blast gate opens. How about that? He's got secondary filtration here on a filter that he can easily slide out, yeah. clean. He's got alarm system so he knows when his dust collection system is filled up. And it's not a huge space, but obviously you can get a lot of work done here. He's got a nice triangle with good space uh, on his uh, table saw, his band saw, his planer. He definitely has gotten some work done he in here. Now, what did he do runs. on this house? Um, he built everything we're going to go see, all the cabinetry, is that right? all of the casework. Yeah, he's just, and it's, wait till you see it. It's it's crazy. And you, you couple that with his technological mind and you get stuff like that yeah so this is if i'm if i'm uh, understanding correctly this is probably the load center for his franklin batteries that are somewhere That's in the exactly. house so this brings the load in and decides are we going to run the house off the battery are we going to run the house off the power grid and right. these two pretty white panels are Leviton's system so he's got a both workshop and mechanical space all in the same spot and he's got total control, you know, he is. Uh... Now I know we're here to see modern details and some cool craftsmanship, but I'd love to see some mechanical spaces where in the basement. Can we go hit that first? There is, but on our way out, I got to show you this. This is one of the, the things that I love. Clean door. About this clean door, but check this out. What? There's a magnet in there? Yeah. All right. I got to see this. So it's so... a magnetically thrown bolt catch. So this feels doors. like this isn't standard American hardware. And why is this tongue not sticking out here? Yeah, there is nothing there because it is all activated by the magnet. This is Morelli hardware. These It's Italian hardware. These are all European door systems. Neat. So when I have. close this, is that magnet going to last That the just door? throws it. Yeah, so oh, go ahead, try it, try it out. Okay. It's going to be a little hard to see, but when I close the door, the magnet is going to pop out. And now the door closes. And when we hit it like this... It pops in, which means there's nothing to get black over time. There's no, no wear marks, nothing. There's no wear. That's yeah. really neat. And I'm also noticing that the hinges, hinges don't blind. show. They're all hidden hinges. Oh, Steve, you know I love my mechanicals. What do you got going on in here? All lighting is automated. Yeah, just right? popped right Occupancy. on when we came in, didn't it? But uh, yeah, so we have a geothermal system. Cool. That we go out to a vertical well out there. That is... According to Carl, it's about a blow dryer's worth of energy he was, that's heating this uh, house. I heard something like this thing when it's running is 1,200 watts. Yeah, it's something, something like that it's to heat silliness. the whole house. It's silliness. And how many geothermal loops do you remember? I think there's two out there if I remember correctly. Yep. Okay. That go down. Wow, this is beautiful. And this is the heating and cooling for the whole house, right? Yeah. And then, of course, we have loop. our Zender system. Beautiful. Yeah, so, so he's got fresh air coming in. Talk to me about uh, air tightness and insulation levels in this house. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.39. 0.
point three nine. Yeah. So we're about sixty percent of the requirement for passive house in this house. That's incredible. And you know, one of Carl's, you know, in his meticulous nature was such that we had a lot of emphasis on the building envelope and the air tightness and mm -hmm. the windows. And so, yeah, we... It's the best money you can spend on a house right there. It is the best money. You know, one of the Carl's, uh, when I met him very first, it was probably like the second sentence in our conversation. He said, "The with me, the right decision should always win. So we would always talk about different things, but the That's right decision... That's a fabulous decision, homeowner right there. Yeah. I love yeah. to hear that. So. Hey, before we go upstairs, Steve, uh, I heard there's some other interesting mechanicals in this other mechanical room. Let's meet you over there. Oh, yeah. All right, Steve, I, I knew what I was going to see here before I came in. This is really <laughs> cool. So I've not seen one of these in the field before. This is a German company, yep, Steve World Ultron. 80-gallon yep. heat pump water heater. Interesting to see it, uh, of course, in the condition space. But I had a primer. I knew what I was going to find here. Check this out. These are two Moen electronic uh, shower valves that I love that they're not mounted up with the showers. So they're down here in the mechanical yeah. room. And the only thing that's behind the tile behind the walls is a PEX pipe, a cold and a hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. You know, and working with Carl as an architect, you know, you'd like, you like to take credit for everything that's done, but certainly not here because in our collaborative effort with Carl, you notice the water heater is literally three feet below the shower. Super smart. And access means everything. Yep. So this isn't a house where it's like, hey, let's make it look pretty and then we'll figure out how to fit everything in. Mm -hmm. It's no, let's figure out how we build a well-oiled machine here yep. and make it look pretty. So above us is the master shower and then almost literally above that is the secondary the bath shower. shower. And that's where these two um, Moen electronic shower valves are going. Yeah. One for the first, one for the second floor. I have a Kohler uh, at my house, which has worked great. And I also mounted mine in an auxiliary space that I could get to in the right. future. So if you ever have a problem, it can be repaired, fixed, whatever. Also, I was reading the directions on this Moen. And if you unlock this right here, there's a filter in there that you can take out and clean right here. Yep. And in the past, at my at my old house, I had some problems with scale issues, and I had to clean that filter a lot, which meant me taking the trim off, me taking the shower valve out, yeah. and accessing that filter. And it was a giant pain, and I hated doing it. It was really fussy, and I obviously I didn't have uh, use of my shower, and I had water draining everywhere. To be able to do that right here in a basement mechanical space, who cares if it gets wet? It's a concrete yeah, floor. Yeah, no, definitely. And I access absolutely is love that. premium. That's really cool. So, and, and I like how the piping is done too. Very interesting yeah, the, system. The plumbers that, you know, for Howell is just, it, all those subs are amazing. So this is a Howell Custom Homes, by the way. Howell Custom Homes. Yeah, great work so. here. Okay, now we'll show you the pretty stuff. We'll meet you upstairs. <laughs> Steve, I can't wait to see the view from up here. Oh, it doesn't get any gosh. better. Wow, this is incredible. You know, if you don't remember, uh, for our viewers, I've been here once or twice before, and Steve's made a bunch of videos yeah. on this house. There's some really incredible systems. We'll put a link in the description below. But Steve, talk to me about this beautiful sliding glass door with this so, huge fixed panel here. These are my, you know, heading out to European Architectural Supply. These are all Schuco aluminum, triple glazed. I think this one's close to about a 14 footer with a four foot um, operable leaf, which leaves us a 10 foot glass window. And look at the view through it. I mean, that gives you a, that's a giant piece of glass for a really big view. You couldn't script the site better. Mm -hmm. The river literally bends around the house. When you sit in this room, you're looking right down the river. Incredible. It's uh, incredible. And this is Carl's masterpiece, isn't it? You yes. mentioned that he built the cabinets in the house. Well, this, this was the whole awesome. purpose of that workshop. He got that workshop up and running and then basically put a temporary hold on the project where the contractor um, went away for just a short bit of time mm -hmm. and he built all the cabinetry. Wow. So no hardware anywhere. Is that because it's missing or that's because No, that's because latches. that's how he wants it. Okay, yeah. so these are touch latches, aren't they? Yes. And he made all of the boxes. Wow. He made all of the drawer panels. This looks like birch plywood uh, drawer yes. doors, uh, drawers rather. Yep. 
And the fronts and the casework looks like maybe uh, it, plywood bamboo. It's all plywood bamboo. Or bamboo plywood, I yeah. guess. That's really cool. I like that a lot. Check out this cool sink too. And Big four foot sink. <coughs> Looks like you've got a built in cutting board and check this out. So you could chop your veggies here, drop them in the strainer, clean them, and then you still have a drying rack that space. Rotate slash down. whatever else you want uh, for cleanup. The best part of the sink, the view. The view. I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> and I, I've been here. There's a bald eagle that's a resident here. He'll hang out in those trees all the time. Wow. It's uh, it's it's awesome. Fabulous. You, you know, one of the things about Carl building this himself is, you know, you get to do things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, he'll put little spice drawer or shelving on here. Gorgeous. It's got the... So he's not really moved in yet, right? No, but it's got. We're the, still in the in the uh, last finishing stages in the house. Refrigerator. Beautiful Thermador with stainless interior too. Yeah. Looks like an all Thermador kitchen package. Yeah. Uh, and I'm noticing induction cooktop. Are we all electric in the whole house? The whole house is electric. Battery backup on those Franklin batteries that we looked at. Fabulous. Uh, the system downstairs. We'll look at the batteries. They're in the garage. Love it. There, but yeah, all electric. No, nothing bad in this house. So we ended downstairs showing everybody those Moen shower valves that are electronic. How about we go check out the master and we'll show them what that looks like in the finish. Yeah, definitely. Meet you in the master. Come on here. Oh, whoa, before we go to the master, <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? Uh, this is the bank fault door. Ooh. Oh, you're not kidding. Look how thick that door is. Yeah. Wow, with a serious multi-point lock. Interesting, it's a wood door, but it's gotten skinned with yeah. maybe aluminum. It's aluminum panel, and then it has the aluminum inlay in there. You know, wow. one of the interesting things, there's no uh, access to the latch from the outside. Ah, so, so it's, it's meant really for a visitor It's a door. meet and greet door. Yeah. You, you can't walk in this door from the outside. The homeowners are coming in through the garage. Yes. Yep. Wow, that's wild. That's a beast. Where'd this come from? This is all sourced through European Architectural Supply. I believe this was macro win which is their okay. wood frame version of uh so probably European triple glaze probably it's all triple glaze this is probably like insulated. r21 or something for the door you know and has some insulated core and also interesting to see this is an overlay too so check that out yeah. the weather stripping is here mm -hmm. and when the door closes it's three pieces of weather stripping you have that one that one and then you have the one on the door outside Oh, I bet this seals real That's tight. That's how we get the 0.39. And it also <laughs> yeah. sounds like a bank Three ball. axis hinges. So they go left, right, up, down, in and out. So you can tune the weather stripping and the closure on these things. It's That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now we'll meet you at the master. <laughs> All right, Matt. Check this out. We have the those European doors and we have translucent glass mm, on the bedrooms. Same, Same hardware. hardware. Golly, and again... An incredible view for this master, Steve. Yeah, there's no bad view in this house except for maybe a small corner in the basement. Not a big master, though. Pretty Not, small they, size They master. are very much in tune with, I just need what I need. Yeah, you know, not a lot of extra and, space. And a beautiful bathroom to uh, complement it. You know, again, Howells guys, their towel guy, tile guy did a fabulous job. And is this um, also all, from... Uh, this is all Carl. <laughs> and you can see. You know, Check that out. I love it. He's got the build out around the plumbing pipes. That's great. So his his uh, P-trap is right there. In exactly. There. And he's got space. And then around, check out the toilet paper holder and closure. That's awesome. So his toilet paper holder is here. And then his extra toilet paper right there. Yeah. And these look like... Medicine cabinets. These too, are just are medicine cabinets. Oh man, that's awesome. Can we open these? Yeah. And that's it really has neat. the flip out. These are Roburns, which I have at my house, which is a Kohler brand. I absolutely love these at my house. Yeah. They're fabulous. Now downstairs, we saw this. I'm not gonna turn it on because I'm gonna get, actually I am gonna turn it on because <laughs> uh, I think it's worth showing, but I will step out of the, out of the way for a second. So it's got a screen that's got the time and date on here, which is actually kind of nice when you're in the yeah. shower knowing, oh, I've got 10 more minutes to get ready. He's got preset one and two, and then this is our on button that goes to the preset. So, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna video this so that we have it. Steve, and check this out, because I think it's fascinating to see how quickly 
this thing gets up to temperature because that is yeah. below us. So it says good morning. The shower is 78, 83, 89, 90. Oh my gosh. I mean, it was literally seconds yeah. before that shower is ready. That's pretty awesome. And boom, she's off right there. That's fantastic. That's absolutely incredible. That's the power of putting your water heater so close. Gary Klein would be happy, man. <laughs> Gary Klein would be thrilled at that location. This is great. So, I love it, Steve. Yeah. It's, uh, again, there's not much left to when you're, you're working with a client. I mean, I would love to come here and take credit for everything, but when you're working with a client like Carl, yeah. he talks about, you know, I wake up every morning, he goes through his day minute by minute and tries to understand how he can have the best possible day. That's fabulous. And tune his house to it, you know? So one thing we haven't seen yet is we saw that Franklin power transfer. Where are those Franklin batteries at? Those batteries are out in the garage. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go monsters. meet you in the garage. The Star Wars garage with the lights. <laughs> the lightsaber lights. Check those things out. Holy cow. They even look sexy. They really do. <laughs> They're a lot bigger than the Tesla batteries. And if I'm understanding my knowledge of Franklin correctly, Steve, these are LiPo yes. batteries rather than standard lithium ion, yep, which has several benefits. And I believe these are also quite a bit larger in capacity as well. I'll put below a description that has a link to these. Uh, but I want to say that these are more than double the size of a standard power wall. Yeah. Yeah. And for those that don't know LiPo, iron phosphate, lithium iron phosphate. Um, these are 500 pound units. He installed them himself. Did he really? Yeah. So part of Carl's ingenuity is coming up with the systems and all of that, but figuring out how can I do this work myself? Smart. So I really like it. So he doesn't have solar on site yet. I'm guessing that this is going to be part of maybe a net metering. And yes. this is probably his backup generator for the house too, right? It is his backup generator. That's his primary concern. The second one was to buy power at a lower rate in the evening. This um, jurisdiction or utility company sells electricity at night at a far cheaper rate than in the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. So you can switch over. and. So go really on. he could be charging all night long when it's the cheapest, right? Those power stations yeah. are just idling and the, the electricity is cheap. During the day when electricity is expensive, he's just using his batteries. He's using the cheap electricity. And I don't know if this is true today, but I've heard that Franklin has some ability to know that, hey, the weather's gonna be bad tomorrow, so let's not drain the batteries during the day because I'm worried about uh, having this situation where the power goes out at 9 p.m. and I was just about drained and going to charge, but yeah. now I don't have the grid power. They're gonna have a risk management in their app that that's suggests fabulous. that like maybe it isn't a good idea to drain the battery. That's really, really that smart. Works. And we have two car chargers in here. They're all electric vehicles. So their all electric uh, mindset extends far beyond the house. Fabulous. Now on the craftsmanship front though, we're going to end with one of the most <laughs> cool, <laughs> one is, of the most fabulous features in the house. Is, Meet you back is. in the, in the uh, inside. All right, Matt. So, we're not quite finished here. We still have the handrails and stuff to yeah, go. Yeah, no guardrails on yet. We're still under construction. Yes, but man. You Look know. at this. This is incredible. What are we looking at, Steve? This looks like a steel sandwich with something and maybe more bamboo on these treads. Well, one of the benefits of Carl being Carl is he's been the head of engineering for a lot of major companies. So getting things like, hey, I need you guys to laser cut some steel stringers for me <laughs> or 3D print a certain, you know, um, task. Wow. He has access to all of that stuff. Fabulous. So, you so know, I'm assuming this is Carl's handiwork here. This is Carl's handiwork. These are all laser cut. You know, I think these are in like three eighths inch steel plate. So three, eight, three eighths inch plate. And then what's in the center here? We just have a pair of LVLs on her in there. Okay. So those are providing probably a little bit of stability, a little bit of stiffness, but not necessarily strength. Yeah. The strength is coming. Certainly it's a, think of it as a, I forget the name of it. Um, not a plinth beam, um, but it's when you put the steel core in between oh, the yeah, two, two sure. by tens. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the same concept. Sure. Um, all the treads he made, um, you know, this was his mock-up that he had showed me. Okay, so it's a hollow tread, kind of like a torsion box. Yes. And it looks like you've highlighted here the Sharpie. Yeah, that's his, the uh, lock miter. Lock joint. miter on there. I've had this plyboo at an old house of mine that I uh, 
uh, actually my previous house before I built my new house, and it was a kid's vanity, Steve, yeah. that had a, uh, a step stool for my young kids to be able to brush their teeth. And they would ram their step stool, which I made out of plywood, into this mm -hmm. almost every night. And after doing that for 10 years, it still looked brand new. This has got to be one of the hardest plywoods I've ever seen. It is. And one of the things that I really like, as much as I loved the original mock-up he did, look at how the grain changed. He, he switched he to a different plywood <laughs> and he created it so it almost looks like a pair of, or a series of laminated blocks. That's beautiful. And, yeah. uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. He's got these um, little tangs they're little steel nibs. So the fear here is, is that these are bolted or screwed in from below. And to keep them from overturning, they slide in. There's a little slot in back that catches these ah, little steel right tangs. Yeah. And that keeps it from overturning. Wow. So, and everything is blind fastened, obviously. And Fabulous. we're just working through that. Incredible handrails. craftsmanship. Now, of course, for the everyman or the common person who doesn't have a head of engineering as your homeowner, uh, <laughs> our friends at ViewRail are doing similar looks yep. uh, with glass and steel and wood and all kinds of stuff. So I might recommend you go check out ViewRail Certainly. in the future. But Steve, Certainly. incredible house. Your homeowner is absolutely the most amazing man I've ever met. And I love these yeah. features in this house. You've really done an amazing job of not just building a really high performance house, but a house that's really comfortable, a house that's really durable and incredibly aesthetically pleasing at the same time. Yeah, the impossible dream would be that I just recirculate Carl's in my career, right? <laughs> like every February I get a new Carl project and just work with him for about 16, 18 months and then go right into the next Carl that's version right. and next, because he, he has been nothing but a, a dream client. And, um, you know, it's it, and it, it's a, a two-way street too. I mean, he, he's certainly one of the smartest people I've ever met. And, but I think a lot of his intelligence is he'll stop and listen too, mm -hmm. right? And, that, and then we always resorted to the best decision, Juan. Fabulous. Guys, if you wanna see more from this house, Steve made a bunch of videos over here. You call it the Riverside? Riverside Project. Riverside Project. Document he's got an Instagram, he's got it on uh, all of his Build Show uh, videos over at thebuildshow.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and we made a video on the outside too, so go check that one. But if you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time on the Build Show.